In the sim, do you have trouble maintaining centerline control? Keeping the aircraft straight on takeoffs and landings sounds easy, but it isn't. The transition between rudder, nose wheel, and brakes is tricky, especially when you're using your feet instead of your hands. In this video, I'll show you why good rudder pedals matter, but I learned that there's a lot more to it than just that. Rudder control is one of the things I've struggled with the most, not just in the simulator, but in real flying too. During one touch and go lesson, I came close to veering off the runway as we were taking off again. I had to quickly say, your controls. My instructor took over right away. At the time, I wasn't sure what went wrong. It shook my confidence. When I started training again, I told my new instructor that centerline control was something I had always struggled with. I asked him to keep an eye on it. As we taxied out, I started to wonder if I was holding my feet the wrong way. I'd seen a video showing a technique where you press the pedals with the balls of your feet, but I had been using my whole foot. When I asked him which was correct, he said he preferred the full foot method because it was less fatiguing on long flights. But he told me to use whichever felt natural and gave me the best control. That made me curious. So I did a little research and tried some things out in the sim. And that's when I started to see what was really happening. In most general aviation aircraft like a Cessna or a Cirrus, the rudder pedals are completely mechanical. They control three systems, the rudder, the brakes, and the nose wheel steering. In flight, they move the rudder on the tail to control yaw, the left and right movement of the nose. You use them with ailerons to keep turns coordinated and the balls centered. They also keep the wings level in a stall and align the airplane with the runway in a crosswind. On the ground, pedals control both the nose wheel and the brakes. At low speeds, during taxi, takeoff, and rollout, the rudder itself isn't very effective. Until you reach about 30 or 40 knots, you're mostly steering with the nose wheel. Each pedal is linked to these systems mechanically. Cables run back to the rudder, so when you press one side, you're physically pulling a control cable. It's not smooth, especially in older aircraft. It feels firm, direct, and sometimes a little clunky. The brakes work through hydraulics. Pressing the tops of the pedal pushes fluid into the brake master cylinder on each wheel. The more pressure you apply, the stronger the braking. Forward and back movement controls the rudder and nose wheel. Pressing the top pivots them like accelerator pedals in a car. That's what applies the brakes. You use the same pedals to steer, to coordinate, and to brake, often within seconds of each other. That transition between braking and rudder is where small mistakes can creep in. And that's exactly what set the stage for my own problem. There are two main ways pilots use rudder pedals, the full foot method and the ball of foot method. Both keep your heels on the floor for rudder control. To brake, you lift your heels and press the tops of the pedals. With the ball of foot method, you flex your ankle to flatten your foot and then slide it up. That's two motions instead of one. It seemed harder, so I hadn't been using it. But the real problem was my old sim setup. The chair sat too high, so my feet met the pedals almost flat. That's why many lower cost pedals are flatter. They fit desk setups, not more realistic cockpits. In a real airplane, the seat is about 16 inches off the floor. You sit lower and your legs angle more forward and less downward. So the pedals need to be more vertical. I bought the Virtual Fly Rudo pedals for their build quality and realistic force. I didn't realize their vertical design didn't match my desk setup. The forces were also higher to match the real aircraft but when I pushed hard, the pedal unit moved forward and my chair rolled backwards. I had to strap the chair to the pedals just to fly. In that setup, expensive pedals worked worse than cheap ones. High-end pedals need a rigid frame. That was one reason I built my new simulator on a sim racing chassis. It fixed the geometry and made my position closer to the real airplane. But even with the new frame, I had another problem. Using the full foot technique, it was easy to press the brakes by accident. Unless the seat was set just right, my foot was in a position that allowed the brakes to engage too soon. Aircraft seats move in notches, not small increments like a car. That's when I realized what happened in my real flight. I was using the full foot method, 
my seat was probably off by a notch. And as I went from braking to rudder on the takeoff, my foot hit the brake again without me knowing it. That simple geometry and technique issue was almost what sent me off the runway. The FAA training manual recommends the ball of foot method for exactly this reason, to avoid inadvertent braking. In my new simulator, I tried both methods again. The ball of foot technique worked better for me, but it does take more effort and can be a bit fatiguing. But I can pause, adjust, and build strength over time in the sim. And I can practice between lessons. I also finally understood why the Rutto pedals felt so real. They have the right width, the same as the GA cockpit. They use force sensing brakes like a hydraulic system. They move straight forward and back instead of in an arc. And they feel solid and a little clunky, just like the real airplane. All of those details make the experience much closer to real flight. They let me practice rudder control and centerline technique with realistic force and feedback. Most sims model avionics and yokes well, but the feeling of flight, especially takeoff and landing, is hard to get right. That's where a realistic setup makes the biggest difference. With good pedals and proper technique, you can build real habits and real muscle memory. This experience changed how I think about realism in flight simulation. It's not just about great visuals or physical cockpits. It's about how it feels and how those feelings connect to real flying. Getting the geometry right and using the right technique helped me fix a bad habit that was holding me back. Now I can practice centerline control, braking, and rudder coordination anytime I want. There's a saying that flight simulators are useful for everything above 10 feet off the ground. For me, a state-of-the-art simulator changes that. It lets you train all the way down to the ground, where the hardest lessons and most meaningful progress happen in early training. Fixing the rudder pedals didn't just make the sim more accurate, it made it more valuable. If you found any of this useful, please subscribe for more episodes about sim realism. Thanks for watching and happy simming.